past Sunday, even though it was Memorial Day, I felt led to uh, bring a message about Joseph in the Old Testament. But I want to talk a little bit about Memorial Day uh, today because it is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Most of you have heard me say that my father was killed in World War II, and as I said in my written devotionals, the email devotionals uh, that some of you receive, that we should remember and pay tribute to the wives of those men whose pain and loneliness lasted a lifetime. We say that those killed in combat gave the last full measure of their devotion. Well, those who were left behind alone, usually with children to raise, gave their devotion day after day and year after year. My mother never remarried, and I was all that she had, and she was all that I had. And she had many opportunities. She had a number of proposals. But she told me that when you've had the best, when you've had the perfect man, you just don't settle. And you can imagine how that made a little boy and a teenager feel to be told that his father was perfect. And it was nice to know that I wouldn't have to share my mother's love with anyone. But most of all, to think that my father was perfect, at least in her eyes. Of course, later in life, it broke my heart to see her alone. I was tied up with my family, with my wife and with our daughters, and she was in very, very bad health. And both of my parents made the ultimate sacrifice uh, in their own way. So when we think about Memorial Day, of course, we remember the men who gave their lives. But I want us to remember also the wives who continued to suffer in many cases for many, many years thereafter. Give thanks to God if he gave you parents who really, really loved you. But nothing our parents did for us or have done for our children can even approach what our Heavenly Father did for us. Our parents didn't create us, of course. God did. And God loved us so much that he came and lived among us. It blows my mind whenever I think about an infinite universe, no beginning, no ending, time with no beginning and no ending. And God is beyond them both. God, I guess, created them both. And yet that same God who could create infinity, if you will, at one point in history, becomes a baby born to a teenage peasant girl in a Jewish town. And before he was a baby, he was a fetus in her womb. Just imagine how much God must love us to lower himself to be like us so that he could save us. And then we put him to death. And he still says, Father, forgive them. When he's on the cross dying, among his last words were, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Do we take that love of God for granted? I think we all do. When I finish, I want to give you an opportunity to thank God for his love and ask for his forgiveness that we do, I know, take for granted. In the Bible, we read God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. You know, I talked about my mother. Just to let you think about your own parents and how much they sacrificed for you. Well, think what God sacrificed for his children, all of us, beyond anything that we can possibly imagine. And what did he ask us to do? He asked us to tell other people about his love. 
his final words before he ascended into heaven. And I'm going to go back and talk about what I, uh, I mentioned after, after Easter. His final words to the world, to all of us, go into all the world and basically to tell other people about my love. Tell other people how much I love them. And I guess it was a couple of weeks ago I asked you, how many of you have shared your faith with anyone in the last week or month or year or five years or 10 years or 20 years? These are the last words that Jesus spoke before he left this earth. And don't you think he was serious when he said these things? And don't you think he expects us to be obedient? Now, I don't mean that we go out and, and have some holier-than-thou kind of attitude, give the impression that we have all the answers because we don't. What we can do is go out and share with others what Christ means to us, what he has meant in our lives, the difference that he has meant in our lives, because that's what people really respond to, because they'll know if Jesus has really meant something in our lives, if he has helped us deal with all the problems of life, that he, can make, he will help them deal with the problems of life as well. Remember before Christ ascended into heaven, he talked to Peter, and he said, Peter, I want you to feed my sheep. Three times he said, Peter, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. And that's what he is saying to us. We are to feed other people with the love of Christ. We are to share his love with others and we don't have any excuses. And we should do that until the day we die. And that really is the title of my sermon. Sharing your faith to the very end. And I really just want to tell you a story about a man named John Harper. I doubt that any of you have ever heard his name. When I prepare my sermons, I have a rocking chair downstairs in my basement, and I sit in that rocking chair, and uh, I work on my sermons and on my devotionals, and I also have a rocking chair in the bedroom, and right in my line of sight from that rocker in the bedroom is a bookcase. It's a relatively small bookcase, and it has maybe 20 or 30 books in it, most of which I've never read. And one day I was sitting in that rocker and it was like this one book jumped out of the case. It didn't, but it caught my attention. I'd never read it before. I'd never even seen it in the bookcase before. And it was like it said, read me. And I read it. And I couldn't put it down. And it was the story of people who had shared their faith in Christ with others. A hundred different, 101 different stories, but none of them were more than two pages long. And so when I started reading them, I just kept reading them. I read them all afternoon. I finished all of them before the evening. And one of them was about a man named John Harper. And I want to tell you his story because I hope that this might... Well, this might be, might encourage you to share your faith in Christ. John Harper was a Christian minister in the 1900s, early 1900s. He had had three near-death experiences, and he said, I never worry about near-death experiences because that just means that I'm, I will have I have a near eternal life experience when that happens. But his wife died in childbirth, so it was just him and his, his daughter, a little girl, and he was called to pastor a church in England. He didn't know if he wanted to do it or not, 
so we decided that he would take his daughter to england and they would at least look at the church so they were going to go to england on this beautiful luxury liner and they were going to look at this church the year was 1912 and the liner was the titanic and in the middle of the night when they were at sea the titanic hit the iceberg most of you know the story and as the ship was sinking he rushed out to the lifeboats with his daughter and we know from witnesses that he did this and he put his daughter in the lifeboats you know there weren't enough lifeboats for everyone but the women and children were put into the lifeboats that they did have and so he made sure that his daughter was safe and then he rushed around from cabin to cabin trying to find other people to take them to the lifeboats and then and as he went from cabin to cabin he said women children and those of you who are unsaved go to the lifeboats at the very end he was thinking about people who were about to die and would they die and face jesus or would they die and go into eternity alone well the ship finally went down and he was thrown out into the water and there were a few people flailing, flailing around in the water I, the writer I think said it was 20 degrees the water was 20 degrees and uh, he saw this one man who was near a lifeboat and he went up to him and again Harper was only going to live maybe another minute or a minute and a half and he somehow picked him up and he said, have you ever accepted Christ as your savior? And he said, no. He said, will you accept him? And the man said, yes. And he lifted him up as high as he could and the people on the lifeboat dragged him in. And then Harper disappeared. Well, you know, a lot of folks wondered, were these conversions real you know anybody would say yeah I accept him as my savior so they could get in the lifeboat and about oh 20 25 years later there was a religious conference that was held somewhere in Pennsylvania and somebody was telling the story about John Harper and saying that it was wonderful that he tried to do this but doubted that anything of eternal significance ever really happened and this one man stood up and said, I can tell you. I can tell you. He said, I was in the water when he lifted that man up who said he would give his life to the Lord. I saw him do that. And I was still in the water. And he came to me. And he said, will you accept Christ as your Savior? And he said, yes. I will. And with his last, the last basically second of his life, at least above water, Harper raised him up enough that the people in the lifeboat could get him. And Harper disappeared, never to be seen again. This man said, I can tell you that I know one person who gave his life to the Lord because it was me. And now I've become a minister and I've gone into full-time Christian work. And he said, I have a feeling that there were many others that he led to the Lord. He was witnessing to God when he was freezing to death with seconds to go in his life. And the most important thing to him was to help people find eternal life. Harper knew already where he was going to spend eternity. What was most important to him was to help other people have an eternal home with God as well. So, have you led anybody to the Lord in the last few years? And I don't mean in a formal way, 
but have you just shared your faith? Have you just shared with other people what God means to you? That's what moves people. Not a sermon that you try to preach. When we come across being very dogmatic and thinking we have all the answers, that just turns people off. But when we share with other people what Jesus really means to us, people may agree or disagree with that, but they can't argue with our own experiences. That's what we should be sharing with other people. And that's what Jesus said just before he was ascended in heaven. Go into all the world. Go into this little part of the world right here in Fredericksburg, wherever we are and share the love of Christ with people who cross your path. And so I want to challenge you to do that. It would be interesting if I asked you to raise your hands if you had done it over the last few years, but I wouldn't dare do that. I think I think God has convicted you if you need to be convicted. So I hope that you will make a commitment of your life today while we have time to go out and do the most important thing that we will ever do, what Christ commanded us to do. The Lord who came into the world, who lowered himself to become a baby, the same God who could create an infinite universe lowered himself to become like us, to save us so that we can in turn help other people find eternal life as well. We're going to sing our hymn of invitation and I want to invite you to come. First of all, if you know that in reality you've never really accepted Christ as your Savior, and maybe you st have questions about it, but you know you need to take the first step and just come and we'll talk about it quietly just for a few seconds. I want to invite you to come if you know you've drifted away from God. You know we all do from time to time. It's so easy to drift away from God. Just come and st talk to me if you like or just stand here and bow your head and just say whatever you need to say to God basically saying, Lord, I'm coming home. I want you to come if you would like to join our church. We'd love to have you as a part of our fellowship. Let this be a time when you really make a decision. And I hope that you will make a decision to go out and do what Jesus has commanded us to do. There are no two ways about it. He's commanded us to do it. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for giving us life. We thank you for giving your life so that we could live in eternity with you. Give us the courage to share your faith with others. Not that we have all the answers, but we can at least share what you mean to us. And that's the most important thing to other people. Help us to go out today with a new commitment to be the people you want us to be and to do what you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray.